I want to ask you a question. Who's coaching you? You. You. Who's asking you the tough questions? Who's telling you, man, you're the common denominator to all of your issues and challenges? Who's telling you, man, all day long you become the magnetic pulse that attracts to you both good and bad? I want to be your life coach. I want to be the one that cheers you on to the finish line. I want to be the one that you ask the tough questions. And it doesn't mean that I have all the answers, but that means that you have a partner, someone who believes in you, not the you you see right now, but the you you can't imagine, the you that you are to become, the you you were destined to be. I always say, you both need the positive and the negative. It's not enough to have the knowledge of the matter, but we must have the wisdom as well. For well, wisdom settles it. And that's what I want to offer you as you join me on the Coach's Corner. I want to offer you the wisdom of the matter. Maybe it might be relationships, talking about our campaigns for more, for life, the dark room for our subconscious, our spiritual journey, whatever it is, I want to be there to encourage you, to build you, to challenge you, to cheer you on to the finish line. I'm qualified to do this. Why? Because I'm you. Because I'm you. Well, welcome aboard to the Coach's Corner. My name is Marcus Salette, and assuredly, as I always say, I bring to the tables my personal and professional issues, of which many I'm still dealing with, but I also bring to the table the wisdoms, the wisdoms from the understandings that I have learned from my failures, if you will. And... As a result, I trust that you will allow me to earn the right to speak into your life. Today we're going to be talking further about recovering from destructive behavior. And I would be remiss if I wouldn't say thank you to all of those that are listening around the world. It's Freecast, Voicecast, iBroadcast TV. And those uh, platforms respectively get portions of uh, the content that we air. We have more than one show, but they get portions of it, whatever is disseminated from upstairs, so to speak. Uh, but thank you so very much, YouTube uh, listeners, those that, that listen on SIBN Atlanta channel, which is where all of our podcasts for this platform or for this show goes. Uh, and those that are following us on Twitter, Facebook, Block uh, Radio Programming, thank you so very much. And on Spreaker, thank you so very much. All right, so let's get right to it. Destructive behavior, as we have said, could be something that you have instituted on your own. Or it could be that which someone else has done that you have no control over. I think it's safe to say that we can't be trusted to take one day at a time anymore because of the fast track that we find ourselves on in life so we take one moment at a time and assuredly if you you know do an honest and integral investigation into your own life you'll find that you along with myself we have issues and oftentimes more than not we dip and dab into things that we shouldn't to ease the pain or we fall back on quote unquote our default mode and don't and stop thinking things through stop problem solving so to speak so I just want to encourage you that you can do this whatever it is Maybe someone has done something to put pressure on you because destructive behavior does that. It puts pressure on you financially. It puts pressure on you emotionally. It puts pressure on you psychologically, psychosocially, psychologically. It, pr pressure, it puts pressure on you physically. And so once you've acknowledged that the pressure that you are experiencing is from XYZ behaviors, be it yours or others, then you have begun the process of 
processing <laughs> or transitioning, for lack of a better word, uh, into a new moment, a new moment. And you have to, I can't reemphasize this enough, take one moment at a time. Because if you don't, you're subject to fall faster. For where we once were bound, we tend, once we're free, to be bound all the more if we revisit the place of our bondage. That's an original quote for myself. <laughs> okay. So push, rewind, <laughs> and go back and uh, listen to that one again and write it down. But the point of the matter is this. We all are human. Okay, how many times you visit church? Okay, how many times you release quote unquote the dopamine effect? Okay, how much you pray? You're still human. You have to acknowledge those pressure points so that you can relieve the pressure. I myself am in therapy, personal therapy. I ordered me uh Want to get back to my tea drinking days, so I ordered me some herbs um, because I realized too that part of this is chemical. Part of this is chemical. Part of this is psychological. So I ordered me some herbs so I can get back to some tea and honey days and try to try to lay off the coffee because I <laughs> like a caffeine junkie, so to speak. And so realizing that that has been hindering my sleep and. Uh, it doesn't really make me real edgy, but it just makes me restless in the evening time. And in the media business, uh, freelance journalists and beyond, uh, you have to make sure that you're up early. And sometimes, most times, more than not, more often than not, you're staying up late. So I wanted to get, you know, and I got rid of two or three years ago. I got, well, when I started uh, SIBN, I, I got rid of my nap. I used to take a nap like every day, even if it was 10 minutes, five minutes, you know, unless I was on the road or something. So w when you're recovering, you have to have a plan. Now, I'm just going to share this with you, but I haven't told everybody this. <laughs> I guess now I am. Um, I want me. A, I want to get a dog. And I, and, I, and I know that, you know, I know that this is something that I have revisited before. And I have not been good at this. I really have not. But I went to uh, the pound. Uh, it wasn't the pound per se, but it was a shelter. It wasn't even a shelter. It was like a high end place in here in Atlanta, Buckhead. And, uh, you know, with all kinds of defined dogs, dogs with, with, you know, their, you know, whether it's a poodle or what, you know, they, they know what the dog is chips installed and just that and the other and deposit is like 250 which is rather high but you're getting dog food with that which matches the, the what the dog normally eats you're getting shot up to date shots chips is instead I said installed and things of that nature uh, and I just said to myself I need me a small mild mannered dog <laughs> like the captain's dog you know you just go with me everywhere and um, I need something to take my mind off of work I need something to take my mind off of work you know but you know I haven't moved on that because you know of course 250 and uh, then of course uh, the grandkids and you know going to be wondering you know they're going to want the dog for themselves and I just you know I just don't want to be dealing with all the exchanges of whose dog it is <laughs> but I've been entertaining the thought because it's part of my recovery you know I need something to pet and rub <laughs> okay <laughs> that calmed me to break down because I can get pretty riled up you know uh, but, you know, I said all that to say that you have to look in, within your heart and find what is going to aid you in your recovery. Uh, find out what is going to match your personality, match your growth intention, you know, your growth track, you know. 
And, you know, I do remember, and I want to go back to, to taking walks. I must admit um, that I just don't, I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't exercise because I'm, you know, I'm running in between uh, the studios and, you know, and and I do get out and do some things, a few things, you know, with my son, um, my baby boy, last one, the last one that, that is at home. But the point of the matter is, we got to take care of ourselves. Recovery is about self-care, not self-promotion per se, not self-exaltation, exalta but self-care. Uh, are you drinking plenty of liquids? Are you eating fruits and vegetables? And you know, most of us are not. We just do whatever we feel like doing. But part of this recovery, part of this recovery needs, needs to be surrounded with the fact that I have a moment by moment therapeutic approach to healing I have a moment by moment and trust me I can get heated okay I really can and so uh, you know I was watching this thing about this voting rights and I, I'm, I'm not going to go political on you but I'm just saying I was watching the debate on that, and of course, I got to prepare for my other show, the political rant conversation. And I was just saying, I can't believe that we're even here. Why are we even talking about this? It's something that was already signed into law, something already done. Why? Who would who would challenge this? Except for the fact that you may have something else in mind that you want to inaugurate within culture, within the states, or within the counties, wherever, to rack up more votes I mean you know it just gets me so heated it's so fired up that I almost just take off like a rocket I promise you you could almost count me down 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Pow! okay but like I said I did order some herbs <laughs> Because because the coach got us the coach got to slow his roll, <laughs> uh, you know, um, and just and just really go back to self care. You know, for some of you that are maybe listening, some tragedy happened, something happened, wasn't your fault? You had no control, and and you may be asking why me? Well, we're all connected somehow whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, whether we want to or not. I know we some of us don't prefer to be connected, but to, your preference is not part of this prosperity potential here. It is what it is. You don't want to be your brother's keeper, but you are. You don't want to be uh, in the business of helping others, but you are. You don't want to hand out, but you're you're going to have to give a hand up one way or another. You can't live on an island by yourself with your ideals and theology and ideology and expect to grow and pr prosper and uh, develop, if you will. People have tried that and they've died. Uh, so I don't suggest it. But as we move forward in our recovery, we find the things that help us take care of ourselves. I, uh, one of my uh, trying to think of things that I have that I have done. Uh, I particularly like uh, I'm trying to think of something that I've done lately that would give me another example. Well, in 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 both studios, there when one of our studios there's um, like a snack area, you know. And in the other studio, there's an actual uh, small kitchen where, you know, every now and then we'll put some popcorn on and all the guests that come through. And uh, sometimes we'll put on some hot dogs or uh, the COO will do some fish and, and chips and and uh, hush puppies, you know, and we'll go all, go all in. And that makes me feel great, you know, to have. Uh, because you know, I mean, when you're working, you don't always have the luxury of going out to to a sit down dinner. You, know, you got to go out, you got to wait, you got to be seated, then you got to you know get the menu, then they run back and forth to get the water. 
somewhat aggravating because you know you got to get back you only have so much time you know so it makes me feel good and so the point that I'm saying is that you want to release the feel good moments those things that that you discover because there's going to be a discovery that make you excited in calm ways as well as in exuberant ways if you will you want to discover those I was at another store um, uh, several months back and uh, I said this you know I don't, I don't even know why I'm in here you know sometimes I'll go to the store just for therapy y'all like to shop for therapy <laughs> Well, I I like to shop for therapy. I don't do it often, but when I do it, I go I go for the I go for the juggler. Okay, um, but anyway, I I saw this cup, and I had just met this 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 young man. I I got to give him a call. I just had met this young man uh, from Jamaica, and I saw this cup that said that had the Jamaican flag on it, and it was nice too. It had the a weighted bottom with felt on the bottom of the cup and of course the cup was black like I said it had the Jamaican logo and I bought it it was only a buck and I bought it and I you know I sent him a little picture of the cup but you know I use that cup like every single day it makes me feel good now someone had broke a couple of my favorite cups that I've purchased uh in other states in other places and I was so calm I was like well I got my Jamaican cup whatever (laughs) you know I love cups so if you want to get me a gift you can always buy me a special cup all right but cups make me feel good and I'm looking at the cup right now it's no coffee in it but uh, and that's that's you know that's typical but the point of the matter, it makes me feel good to see that cup. And it was it's kind of interesting because I, I, I got the cup that says Jamaican on it after I met a, my friend from Jamaica, <laughs> from Kingston. I thought that was more than ironic. But what I'm saying to you, these little tidbits of discovery aid us in our moment by moment transitional hopefully tranquil uh, ride through these tidbits of discovery if I if I was to give today's thought a theme it would be self-care requires self-care and self and, and recovery requires discovery self-care and recovery requires discovery you're going to have to discover the new you that's really all that you're doing there's much more in you than you could imagine there's much more about you that you could comprehend there's much more surrounding you much more support surrounding you than you can see there's much more about you than you'll ever believe because you're not just a one-dimensional individual and you're not surrounded by just one-dimensional Individuals, everyone surrounding you is equal to the, the 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 triune dimensions from which you yourself spring forth, spirit, soul, and body. And it's hard to manage all three in one, if you will. But that is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with yourself on three central levels, and also dealing with others 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 in the same triune manner spirit soul and body hopefully in that order spirit the conscious the intuition the ability to commune soul the will the mind the emotions and body the organs the limbs the gates such as eyes ears and on and on so you're trying I'm trying we're trying to we're trying to manage the 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 sink the sink the sensation if the, if I pronounced that word correctly we're trying to sink 
the three dimensional triune being as one. When you see me, you see one person. When I see you, I see one person, but I should see the three dimension of you. I sh it should echo in your conversation. It should echo in your activity. No one should be able to get a grip on you because you're growing so at an accelerated rate that by the time they judge an action that you've committed, you've already excelled that experience because you are in touch with your self care for recovery through discovery so that that judgment shouldn't again once again bother you because your growth your growth uh, 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 rate is so high your self-care and self-discovery uh, is so high because you find the little smallest things that you've learned to like that you've learned that you or perhaps don't care for because they were hurting or they were contributing to uh, more bad memories, bad data, bad habits, bad experiences, whatever the heck it, it contributed to, you started switching things around so that you could better manage the spirit, soul, and body, the triune dimensions of which you must merge as one person so that you don't freaking go crazy. You and I are in the journey of our lives and make no mistake about it make no mistake about it there is nothing that you can't do with and through the power of God through which sits on the axis of the finished work of Christ. That's what I believe, at least. And through the guidance of his spirit, there is nothing that if I put my heart and mind to it, I can't accomplish. But there is a voluntary working of the spirit, soul, body, and then there's an involuntary working of the spirit, soul, and body. You know, you're not going to, after you put the batter in the bowl and stir all the ingredients together and whip, whip, whatever you have to do, considering you know, whatever you're making, and you put it in the oven, you don't climb into the oven and get with the heat and try to help the heat do its job. The heat can do its job apart from you. And there are parts of your spirit, soul, and body that you're trying to, to handle that you shouldn't be handling because you didn't make you. You were made, so therefore the one that was made, the creature, should be subject to and pay homage to the creator and submit to the leadings, the dealings of such. And so when I say to you that I, I, I can't stress about that, I'm, I'm going to let go and let God, <laughs> okay? <laughs> as, as, as the old woman said, your arms are too short to box with God. I am not going to spend any time, this is my declaration and proclamation, I'm not going to spend time on something I can't control. And I'm not gonna let people push me into a corner into the, to so to the degree that I am to feel, this is another thing that we'll talk about maybe at another time, but folk wanna make you feel guilty for self-care and self-recovery, self-discovery for your recovery. Folks wanna make you feel guilty for self-care and self-discovery for your recovery. They want to make you feel guilty about why are you going to bed early? You don't drink coffee anymore? Well, no, I still drink coffee, but I enjoy tea as well. And you have to be, see, because the right response can keep you in sync. Please do not disconnect. Sync, sinking has begun. I had to preach right there for those of you that are preachers out there. Please do not disconnect. 
sinking has begun. Somebody going to step to you and say something real crazy and nasty. You know how they're going to come off. You already know what's going to happen. Just put program your mind that stupid people are on the way to aggregate and aggravate the hell out of you so that you can get to heaven, if you will. Just, just a little antic. So just get ready for them. And what I really hate, you, know, you want to want you want to know what get, really gets me stirred up. What, 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 what we're still talking about destructive behavior now. We're talking about we're talking about recovery now. You don't want to get me stirred up. Is folk that question what I do when they should know the reason for why I did it. There's too much of that going on uh, in relationships and and, and of all kinds, parent child, husband wife father daughter mother son too much too many questions if i said it then i meant what i said and then folks want you to say always we're going to do a series on relationships but folks always want you to tailor something uh based on the guilt that they will project on you why you say it like that and you can say it a thousand ways nicer and would never change their actions their response <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like a child. It's like, okay, once you say it's stern, okay, the child gets it. But then as the child gets older, well, why did you, man, your dad, you're tough. Dad, you're mean. No, I'm not mean. It's just that I said what I meant and I meant what I said. See, the, the confidence that you have to have as you're recovering is very significant so that people don't come along and poke holes in your recovery and cause you to relapse back to destructive behavior that will cause you to be disappointed in your own self-recovery and self-discovery and self-care. You better have some confidence as you step out from wherever you're going to step out from. You better know when to be quiet and when not to answer and when to answer and when to speak up. I was at a deal. I was closing, closing a deal. And I took this person along with me because they're good in sales. And then I realized <laughs> it's funny. Every time you give somebody a compliment, sometimes it seems like they set you up for disappointment. What's up with that? <laughs> Anyway, I took the person along and I was very observant as I went, you know, very observant. I didn't exude too much excitement because, you know, I, one thing I've learned in business, once you're desperate, you're going to be open for crack. Uh, uh, you're going to be open for, oh, you can open, somebody's going to take advantage of you somewhere because you're so blissfully excited, you know, and the deal wasn't worth that much energy even though the job required a lot of energy. So anyway, I was listening, I was sitting there and I could tell that the person was desperate. I could tell the person was desperate, the person that I brought along to the deal and they were talking and I was a little impatient because the person didn't seem to have the respect to honor my time, my time that I was taking. And, uh, Neither was the meeting in a private place, per se. It's kind of like, you know, in the hallway. What the hell? <laughs> you know. But I proceeded on. And and uh, then this person began to speak. And I began to speak. And the person told me. I told the person, well, hold on a minute. Because I understand what this job will re require. And the person told me, well, no, I'm trying to help you. I mean, here I am in front of a client. You're telling me, no, I'm trying to help you. I was so freaking mad. I almost went into a... <sighs> you understand what I'm saying? How, how the heck are you going to tell the CEO of the company no? I'm only trying... And you're going to embarrass me in front of the client. Let me tell you something. Just between you and me. And I know they're flagging me. I got to get ready to get out of here. Just between you and me. That client was the worst client that we have had in a while. While he paid his fee, he talked us down on price. 
he wanted a value or two added to the deal that was be that, that made us work harder and longer and then when he got the when he got the package he did nothing but complain and you know what it didn't even surprise me because you know what you can never be desperate for anything but God if you will I'm just serious desperation it gives you makes you a candidate for manipulation I'm just saying Mr. Coach whatever you do take it yourself